Renowned journalist Koki Roberts passed away yesterday due to complications from breast cancer. She was one of the first trailblazing female reporters to cover the highest levels of U.S. government. In addition to her ABC News career, Roberts was among the first female reporters at National Public Radio, often called one of the founding mothers of NPR. Even with her busy life in front of the camera, Roberts found time to be a prolific author, writing books on the role of women in U.S. history. We were blessed to have her on Morning Joe throughout the years. And here's a look at the analysis and sharp questions that she brought to the table. There have been incidents of white kids at basketball games holding up signs to teams which have Hispanic kids on them, saying, we're going to build a wall to keep you out. Are you proud of that? Is that something you've done in American political and social discourse that you're proud of? Well, I think your question is a very nasty question, and I'm not proud of it because I didn't even hear of it, okay? And I certainly do not like it at all when I hear about it. Uh, I have, you're the first one that's told me about that. We either have a yeah. country or we don't. I talk about deporting people that are here illegally. I also talk, Koki, I also talk about building a wall, and oftentimes I'll say, and there's going to be a big, beautiful door in that wall, and people are going to come into our country because we want people to come in. We want but, people but to come into children, our country, Mr. but we Trump. want them what to come in what legally. What children are hearing from you and how they are responding to it? Well, I think people are responding very positively. Children, I think I the message he exits the stage. What is the lasting impact on the Paul Ryans and the Marco Rubios and the Rudy Giuliani's and the entire They're Republican like Party? They're morally tainted. I mean, there's just no question about that. You can't say he's a racist and what he said was textbook racism, uh, but I support him because he's the nominee of my party. Have you been somewhat outflanked on the, uh, uh, I don't know, rudeness quotient or, or the guy who's willing to tell it like it is uh, place? Well. Well, well, thank you, Koki, for the characterization of the rudeness quotient. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> Lover, I could literally watch for hours. Let's bring in author and NBC News presidential historian Michael Beschloss. And Michael, try to put the legacy of Koki Roberts into words. Well, you saw she was tough on uh, an awful lot of political leaders, presidents, and presidential candidates. And I think maybe the legacy, Mika, is not only as a pathbreaker, which she sure was for women, uh, beginning with that stellar career at NPR finally, finally winding up at ABC, but really as an historian, because mm -hmm. she wrote these books, you know, you've read them, we've talked about them, Founding Mothers and others about early America. And before Koki, a lot of times when largely male authors not only would write about people like Dolly Madison and early uh, women in the history of this country, they would be described as sort of peripheral figures, sometimes you know, mainly social, sort of frivolous. And because of Koki, she showed that we wouldn't have this country, and particularly early America, without them, substantively. And the other thing is that this was not unusual because she really came out of American history. She was descended from William Claiborne, who was the governor of Louisiana in the 1810s, believe it or not, had to do with the Louisiana purchase. Her father famously was Hale Boggs, the Democratic House leader who tragically perished in a plane crash in Alaska, 1972. Mm -hmm. uh, LBJ and Lady Bird Johnson were at her wedding, and when her father passed, he was succeeded by a wonderful person I'm sure you knew, Lindy Boggs. So she not, not only wrote about history, but she really had that close family exposure to it. She was history, yes. And yes. Um, I, w she would come on the set and so nice, but I would Lovely. immediately get nervous. I'd be like, oh my gosh, Koki Roberts is here. I, I, Shannon, she made you think, how can I be better? How can I be smarter? Because Koki Roberts is here. Uh, she was a mentor to so many Washington journalists, that, and I didn't realize, I, I never met her, but I was at the White House yesterday when this news broke. 
and it was such a somber moment. Wow. And um, a, a lot of colleagues, you know, went into each other's workspace and, and offered their condolence. Um, you know, I know John Carl posted something really touching and moving about her experience. And I saw reporters going in and sort of offering their condolences to him, and other reporters calling other people they knew who uh, had been touched with her and people she had been kind with. I was there with Kristen Welker and Pierre wow. Alexander in our workspace, and both of them talking about what a, a you know mentor and role model she was for them and and then uh, to just sort of looking around at the White House and seeing that you know we are that group that is picking up this mantle from uh, so many of these great legendary journalists before us and uh, sort of hoping that we are doing this you know we are carrying that on we are picking yeah. that up and, and reminding it was a moment to remind ourselves that we are the next ones going to carry that and for these women who really we have to, the trail right. for us we have, we have a, a big responsibility i, I posted something on knowyourvalue.com as well mike yeah, well you know it's kind of interesting to me perhaps to others uh, about her passing and uh, all the eulogies and describing relationships with her and who she was uh, this is a business like many other businesses filled with people throwing elbows all day long to get ahead. Cokie Roberts never had elbows nope. to throw. She didn't need them. <laughs> all she had was her talent, her intellect, and her heart. At the end of the day, she was just simply a really nice woman, a really nice woman. I didn't know her well, Mika, except when she came on the show. I've always had great respect for her. But watching ABC yesterday when this news broke mm -hmm. and just reporter after reporter, anchor after anchor, from George Stephanopoulos to Martha Raddus to John Carl to, to Sam Donaldson, the reverence they had in their voice for her reminded me a little bit of 11 years ago when Tim Russert died here. Mm -hmm. And the way people talked about him is the way they were talking about Cokie Roberts. And for a young reporter, as Shannon said, who would get a nice email from Cokie Roberts and it would give them life and say, okay, yeah. she thought I did a good job or she criticized my reporting, let me get better. She was so, she left such an imprint, not just at ABC, but on journalism. She was uh, Michael Beschloss, sharp and witty, but really subtle. Uh, subtle she was. And, uh, you know, you know that sort of smile. You saw this even on the program when she was here. And our thoughts, all of us, are with her husband, Steve. Absolutely. Michael Beschloss, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it. Cokie Roberts, way too soon, 75 years old, complications of breast cancer. Still ahead, U.S. intelligence officials have warned time and time again about Russia interfering in the 2020 election. Our next guest is taking a look at the world of disinformation and the influence operations employed by Vladimir Putin. We're back in just a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.